Golf Podcast, where Little White Ball is live. I'm your host, Scotty T, and I'm joined by my co-host, KJ, on the bottom screen, T-Bone, over there. What's up, boys? Doing all right? Killing it. Got a packed house on? today. KJ's back with us. Work's kind of killing you right now, but I'm glad you're here. You look great. Look a little sunburned. Glad Listen to be Friday back. Stay golf. Got some, yeah, I got, I got a lot of golfing on Sunday. Nice. Indoors and outdoors. Did you play with Larry? No. I played uh, with <laughs> Nate, Justin, and Dumpy at Hearthstone Country Club. Had a little Father's Day tournament. Nice. That's good. You were playing in honor of Larry. I dad. guess so. Yeah, we only had one father with us. Well, that we know of. Um, <laughs> um, oh, yes. We bought the uh, lady out of White Claws two different times because it was just so slow. It was ridiculous. Mm, like, well, if you're going to play slow, at least you got to have claws or yeah. some alcohol. It yeah. was, I get a call from Nate about 745. He goes, I'm here. I just saw Bromley. I just saw Zig. Two guy, uh, guys that worked there, kind of like, well, one of the guys that kicked us off like three weeks ago. Yep. There's no, the locker room's closed, the bar's closed. I don't have any booze, and there's no cart lady until 8.30. I'm leaving. <laughs> I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. Well, fellas, we got a lot to get into, man. Golf is back. PJ Tour is back. RBC Heritage off the charts. I got to tell you right off the bat, credit to me. Huge pick, pick Webb Simpson. Friend of the show, his caddy, Paul Tesori. I repurposed, sent something out on Twitter and Instagram. Go back and listen to Paul. We just, great, fantastic interview. It just really kind of puts in perspective how good those guys are. And Webb Simpson is playing some unbelievable golf at the moment. Uh, Really for the last couple years, I would say. So go back and listen to the episode with Paul Tesori. I'm going to put it right there. And... So we're going to talk about that. I also got to tell you right off the bat, T-Bone was a little bit worried about me this week because I sent a call to action out and y'all responded phenomenally. The audience out there can't thank you enough for all the reviews that were written. And I'm going to have this run for one more week. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you write a review and give us five stars, I will send you a box of the balls that you're choosing and or a three under par hat. I even told Scott, I was like, dude, let's go with the sleeve or something. And you said, nope, I, I, I'm going with the I'm going I called with the him box. immediately. I was like, did we get a, did we get a, like, a golf ball sponsorship? We're What's hacked or, going on? Yeah. We I guess I'll leave, a, I'll leave a review just so I can get a 300 par hat. Those look dope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I'm appreciative of the response too, but, you know, not yes. to throw our listeners under the, under the bus, but kind of some greedy bastards if you <laughs> You ask me. <laughs> there was a few of them wow. that texted me, and they were like, "So I just get a free box if I like what? <laughs> like what else is going on here?" And I'm like, "No, like this is it. This is the deal." So I'm gonna have that run for one more week. If you write a review, give us five stars and a review. I'll send you a box of Pro V's or a ball you're choosing, or a three and a par hat. And look, those who said three and a par hats, thank you. <laughs> but I'll send you both. I uh, want to read a couple of them real quick. Uh, Jeb, exclamation point 69. He gave us 6.9 out of five stars. I mean, three on the par. Come on, right? Love it. That's kind of the whole point of three on the par is to promote three on the par. He said, quality content for great guys. Hotter takes than a woodland stinger. A hellacious <laughs> steed. Uh, shout out to P. Nev. He gave a response oh, nice. as well. Said these guys are incredible. If you're not listening or missing out, I want to give a shout out to Derek from Virginia. He also said that uh, he's boys with Garza, friend of the show, and uh, they actually called me in Garza was in Virginia for a ruling, and I went against Garza. So shout out to Derek on that Thanks. one. Uh, Tanner from Dallas, Lance from Austin. I don't know. I'm maybe uh, is it Calic? Casey Calic. Well, I guess what we're getting first and last names. I don't know if this is him or not, but this is from number – it's minus three, Rico69. That's, That's gotta my brother. Him. That's got to be him. That's your brother? Yeah. He said nothing better what? for – nothing better to listen to a road trip. Also, new hats coming out looking awesome. So, uh, Will from Minnesota, also shout out to you. You know who you are. And my boy Meeks. 
Micah coming in hot. So appreciate y'all writing all those reviews. Y'all are awesome. What did say? I don't think it was Calic, but he wants a hat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I want a hat. We'll get you a hat. No worries. So keep those reviews coming in. Those are my announcements. Thank you again. We really appreciate you. Also, at one point, we were 69th on the golf charts for Apple Podcasts. Our namesake, pretty cool. Come on. That's pretty sick. I love it. Yeah. So keep those in. Uh, we'll do social media plugs at the end because I just want to dive right into RBC unless there's anything else y'all want to add. Uh, real quick, T-Bone merch. Hats are closed, right? I believe they're closed. And I'm sure we'll have a few them, stragglers. Yep. Uh, we're gonna, in. we're gonna, we're gonna figure it out. But I'm thinking in the next week and a half, we'll have the hats. If you added your shipping address, they should be also about a week and a half away. Um, if you live in the Houston area, or if you fucked up and added a group shipping, we're gonna gladly send it to you. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a trial and error, but merch is coming soon. Boom. Sweet. All right, RBC Heritage boys. Uh, second week back, PJ Tour is back. Before we get into Webb Simpson, again, credit to me for picking him to win. Paul Tesori, awesome guy. I'm gonna, dude. I'm on riding. The, I don't think I picked dude, the that right horn, winner. baby. Exactly. I don't think I picked the right winner since I picked Rory McIlroy to win the players uh, last year. Because I didn't pick Hideki Matsuyama this year. He's your 2020 player champion. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm really excited about this, but right off the bat, boys, the first week, you know, they're doing the whole testing protocols, right? For the PJ tour. How do we get this done? Nick Watney tested positive this week for the coronavirus. And uh, it's good to know that Nick Watney's still out on tour. That was my first reaction. Damn, that's pretty dark. I'm just kidding. So I don't he know. Really if done be... shit since the shell that one year, huh? He almost won a U.S. Open. Yeah, okay. he's dude. He, at one point, I felt like he was in the mix every yeah. single week, like yeah. rising star. But I agree. Good. I I didn't know he was still on the PGA Tour. Honestly, <laughs> I feel bad saying that because. Yeah, but really what I want to get in. So, you know, best wishes to Nick Watney. I hope he recovers. And really to everybody out there. Um, Harris County in particular, here where we're at in Houston, cases are going back up at the moment. So everybody stay safe out there. want to get that out there first. I want to get into Sergio Garcia a little bit. T-Bone, do you have this on Golf Gossip for this week? I didn't. Do you see what this he said? almost slipped past me. Uh-uh. So Sergio said, you know, so him and Nick Watney oh. traveled together <laughs> from – colonial to rbc or from austin something like that they they travel together and apparently they're friends uh, sergio said there are a lot there's a lot of other people that probably deserve it a lot more than him and he's the one that got it meaning the virus meaning that there are a bunch of other people out there on the pj tour who probably deserve the virus more than nick watney so my question to you who in your opinion what does that the mean coronavirus? what does he mean by that I think there's a language barrier there. <laughs> I think what saying, he meant to say is this couldn't happen to a nicer guy, but instead he okay. said, I bet he there's worded a it, He worded there. it very poorly. Yeah, that was yeah. a snippet of a quote of like a really long quote because he was saying how awesome Nick Watney is as a person, really nice guy. Yeah. I feel really bad for him that he's the one to test positive when essentially there are a lot of other people who, des- who are a-holes and deserve it more than he does. So – who do you all think? So you're, you're polling a question right now to say who should have coronavirus. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to touch PGA this on a 10-foot pole, dude. <laughs> I mean, there's the default answer that Patrick we Reed. can all go around and say Patrick Reed. Move on, next um, question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't catch that. The only quote I caught was that Justin Thomas had mentioned that the PGA Tour wasn't taking it seriously enough. Yes. So, him and Fitzpatrick um, were like taking a dump on Hilton Head, saying that people yeah. aren't taking it seriously. All right, whatever. Yeah, I don't know to t- I'm, I don't know what to tell him. Yeah. So uh, T Bone, man, I kind of want to toss it over to you because you said in our group chat this morning that you were willing to, you you had some heat, throwing fastballs. Uh, yeah, I didn't have a, I just wanted some to bring some more energy today, something about, you know, DJ's 36th birthday, just feels like a good golf day. We need to 
you know, I think he we, we kind of shit on him, but he's also kind of like our guy in a way. So I was just feeling good, good vibes, uh, good interview coming up that will maybe be playing after this that we can give a little teaser towards. Definitely. Um, I'm not – this might be a little much to say, but it may or may not have a little bit of involvement with Steph Curry. Um, no, I mean, we can tease it. Holy moly, the shirt, the uh, Pup Putt show on ABC. Tanner Beard a, joined the it's show. It's a chipping show. No, it's a Pipe Putt show. Basically, it's a chipping show. Did yeah. you see the shots they got hit on that thing? Yeah, he was telling us about it, just like how they're wild and. Like, you should go crazy. out there with a square strike and just demolish people. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a square strike how cool would that be? wow hey did, does justin still have the square strike oh dude he's got like three different he's got like the square strike the stroke saver and then the chippo i think beautiful it's offensive but and then yeah. three brand new wedges that he should replace with the square strike the stroke saver and the chippo <laughs> Uh, unbelievable so yeah stay tuned for the tanner beard interview he's a texas guy we kind of talk he's also a hollywood actor producer so uh he actually has some friends of his that came out to support him if you watched last week's episode uh, uh no big deal but zach efron was there to support him as well as josh uh Jamel. Jamel, yes the guy uh, – I know him from Transformers. He's like the military guy from Transformers. He used to date Fergie. Or he used to be married to Fergie. Married. What? Yeah. No big deal. So, he's, he's pretty big time. And yeah. then there were a few other people that were out there that I don't remember off the top of my head. But he's a really cool guy, like really down to earth, loves the game. We kind of talk about favorite players and all that stuff. Stay tuned for that. I'll put the time description down below. So, uh, T-Bone, today's DJ's birthday, you said? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Big 36. That thing on Instagram when he was hitting like it was like 36 dingers for DJ's 36th birthday and he was just hitting bombs. There's dingers a lot of good content. All the dingers. above. <laughs> well, wow. he probably hit dingers before he hit his dingers. Zappers. Um, I did watch a lot of his highlights and stuff today just on on Instagram before we started recording today and I just forget how freaking good he is. It's just like, always his putter. It's the same thing every time. Like, like the hole in one, or when he hit it to a foot in Hawaii from like a 480 yard par four, that was one of the most amazing shots I've ever seen. And it's just like when he's hitting these bot, like there were multiple highlights of him almost making a hole in one on a par four. You, um, you can you can say whatever you want to say about yeah, it's Hawaii and it's blowing, it's downhill, but that hole was like what 440 something. Yeah. And he hit it to like 50 <laughs> yards out. <laughs> He carried it almost there. Like, yeah. unreal. And it rolls past the guy that's on the green. Like, bomb. Yeah. Just a ton of star power, though. Bombs the ball. He has, like, they showed, like, five hole-in-ones he had throughout his career. Like, he's he's the man. I think he's a very easy target to shit on, but I think he's at least one of my favorite golfers. So, I hope he celebrates tonight. Has I'm a good sure day. he is. <laughs> He was also married to Paulina. Is that his greatest accomplishment? Um, are they married? Well, you're right. I think they've been I'll engaged for like back. 10 years. They've been, he uh, had children with Paulina. Yeah. Or Paulina's husband, give or take. Yeah. That's funny. That might be his greatest accomplishment outside of – no, that might be it. I don't know. Yeah, Could okay. Be. He's I'm, doing well. I'm looking it up. He – Dustin Johnson has 20 PGA Tour wins. I feel like in this day and age, that's very rare. Like, it's hard enough to win one time on the PGA Tour. And he's he's done it 20 times. That's very impressive. But his lack of, lack of accomplishments probably stick out more than anything, unfortunately. You know, yeah. even if you go back to his U.S. Open at Pebble Beach in 2010 – his he's been so right there so many times and whether it's him three putting on 18 at chambers bay or the pga championship when Keimer won like what it's unbelievable back to his wins one of the i think one of the things that's most impressive about it and i don't know if he's got the record for this but it's number of wins in a season or sorry 
uh, seasons in a row that he's had a win. It's something crazy that I think he might have the record for that he has at least one win every year for the last probably 10 to 15 years. And you think about it, he's he's had some injuries here and there, but, you know, it's a lot of personal problems. Um, but despite all that, he's always been a uh, a pretty solid player for a while. But he's just Jack a man, too. That? How does Jack not hold that record? Or is it is he, it just active? It could be active, but, like, I'm, I don't know. If you think of Tiger, he's, he definitely doesn't have that record. Oh, yeah. It's like the – also Our modern learning. day Cal Ripken. <laughs> Cal Ripken is that? Awesome. You do that? <laughs> I, don't I don't think anyone has ever compared this to. <laughs> Compare Dustin Johnson to Cal Ripken. What is going on here, T Bell? Where did you come up with that one? Uh, yeah, I'm just talking out of my ass right now. I don't. Know. It doesn't really. That comparison didn't. Really well, work. also worth noting that Dustin Johnson dropped out of the official World Golf rankings. He dropped out of the top five for the first time since 2016. So that is four years in a row that Dustin Johnson has been in the top five in the world golf rankings with only one major win to show for it kind of stinks. Um, Roy McIlroy hasn't won a, a major since 2014. Uh, I'm sure he's probably somewhere along that category too, but you know, his, and, he might, he might be the most talented person on the PJ tour when push comes to shove with his driving distance and everything. Yeah. And he, he also does have one of the weirdest careers because he has all this talent, not much to show for it, but every major that he's contended in, there's always been something that's weird, something weird happened. Like you have the grounding of the club, you have an 82 on Sunday at Pebble Beach, the U.S. Open. And even when he won the U.S. Open, they gave him a one stroke penalty on the back nine on Sunday. What was that I love for? it. It was something like his ball moved, but like while he was, I don't know if he was like in the process of setting up to his ball and he had a lingering penalty stroke that they didn't know if they were going to give to him. They're talking about it while he's playing the back nine. I was like, is it like the ball? Holy oscillated? shit. Something like that. Yeah. But he, uh, um, he's had a weird career, but yeah, unfortunately I think just underperform underperforming is, uh, the, uh, the main takeaway that, that everyone takes from it. Also, totally jumping around on this podcast. We talked about, we gave some credit to Webb. Um, you know, may or may not, his his success this week could have come from some three under par pod magic. Who knows? Definitely. There was also some three under par pod magic um, this weekend with Chris Stroud. Um, That's right. I think it was kind of before we knew how gettable the course was for the weekend, but he fired a 63 on Saturday. I think it was a 63 or 64 and was a few off the lead. So we, uh, I don't know if there's any PGA tour players out there listening right now. <laughs> if you want to, you want to get hot, might need to hop on the pod. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Chris Child, he kind of cooled off a little bit, shot even par on Sunday uh, for a T28 finish, but yeah, shout out that leaderboard. One of the hardest things to do is follow up a really good round with another good round. So even if a pro goes out there and shoots 63, it's so hard for them to go out there and play low and go low again the next day. And yeah. um, it was a birdie fest out there, man. The entire week was a birdie fest. The course was gettable. Uh, the weather delay on Sunday made it for some primetime golf come Sunday evening. KJ, did you watch any of it? Or, uh, I were did. You I'm track? just kind of wondering how much deeper into this podcast y'all are going to let me get in. Before y'all mention my boy Joaquin Neiman, baby, <laughs> he was there. You can mention him, but Scott's not going to. Nope. I have nothing against the guy now. Like I just can't pronounce his I name. I think you only don't like him because I like him so much. <laughs> Probably. Uh. It's turning into a thing. It really is. You know who I thought? Okay, I'm. I'm I don't want to talk about you, Joaquin Neiman. Joaquin. <laughs> Nineteen hundred, dude. That's freaking low. And he didn't. T T five finish really good week. I thought it would be really funny if Dylan Fratelli ended up winning. If he just like comes out of nowhere, shoots sixty two. He has a two shot lead before the problem was though was before the leaders even teed off. So of course we know what happened. Webb Simpson, what he birdied five out of the last seven holes to go out and win. Unbelievable twenty two under. Uh, that 
shoots Webb Simpson up to number five in the world. Knocked DJ off. He knocked DJ out of the top five. Who would have thought that Webb Simpson would knock Dustin Johnson out of the top five on the official World Golf Rankings? Dude, he's just he's just the quiet dad that goes about his business and gets shit done. Like, he's never the guy that you're like, oh, shit. He's here. I'm screwed. But he gets it done. I think he might be turning into that type of player, though. I think he's the Hall of Famer. Really? Stand by. Whoa. <laughs> Tebow, continue. I think he's pretty I close just, to the verge. It's very low key, but if you think about it, He's got some wins, and those wins include a U.S. Open and a Players' Championship. That's better than Dustin Johnson. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Unfortunately, like, he's not – he's not the – I would say he doesn't hit his home with, like, the, the younger crowd, uh, like most of our listeners. Um, probably, probably is like a – I don't even know who's a Webb Simpson fan. I mean, I guess we are because we are. We've got ties to him now. But I, he's, am. Uh, I think the funniest thing I saw today was um, Webb Simpson is. This will be a better comparison. Also, can't take credit for it. Oh but yeah. It was, uh, Webb Simpson is the Philip Rivers of golf. Uh, has a lot of kids. Religious. Um, looks bad doing it. But like wins. If so, he hit one I, shot. He hit one shot that stood out to me so much that I actually text Scott as soon as the pro trace was on it. It was that par five that bends around to the left. And he's got like probably 80 foot trees and he just bombs a three wood to like 15, 18 feet, like perfect little draw high over the trees. Like that's what I think my shots look like in my head. And then I get out there and hit it like on the driving range. Ropers. What made that uh, sequence really good was you got to hear them talk about it. You got to hear Webb talk with Paul about working through that shot. And Paul was like, Hey, you know what? If you pull it, aim here because if you pull it, it will go to the middle of the green and you'll get 10 more yards out of it. Because when you pull the ball, you generally hit it further. And just hearing them think they're, hear the thought process behind the shot that he hit and then see Webb just hit a pull it right through that wind and just over the trees like you said just mwah, so beautiful well, if you the all the listeners need to go back and give that uh interview with paul to story uh, another listen because i i still remember my jaw hitting the ground when i heard him say that webb has six different shot tra trajectories it's like it's that they're comfortable with six different flights that he is comfortable with I can barely hit the ball in the face. I don't even think I ever really think about trajectory anymore unless it's straight <laughs> into the wind. I mean, it does what it does these days. Like, as long yeah. as it's going that way, I don't care if it's 20 feet off the deck or 50, 100. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, I saw this on Twitter earlier today. This is from Justin Ray. He said, over the last two seasons, Webb Simpson has had a weekend scoring average of 68.08. That is not only the best on tour, but it's nearly 0.4 strokes better per round than any other player on tour. I'm thinking, so you're telling me Webb Simpson is averaging a 68 on the weekends and he's doing it. He's about a half a shot better than anybody else in the field. Like that is such an advantage. So my question to you is Webb Simpson, the most underrated player of this generation. I mean, that's, that's a tough question. Cause he seems like, he does this in spurts, you know. Ryder Cup years, he's always there, you know. It seems like you've seen him in every Ryder Cup. But it, it, it seems like when he starts winning, he just, you know, he's never outside the top 10, 15, and then he wins, and then top 15 wins. You never see him, like, dominate people and then just keep doing it all the way through. It seems like he gets on, like, a streak, you know. It doesn't help that Webb got hit by the anchor ban. I think that could be why it feels that way. Cause there's about that two or three year span where we didn't really see much of Webb Simpson because his putting stunk. And then uh, I believe Tim Clark showed him at the players one year, the arm lock 
And then he's been great ever since. But his ball striking is so good. I think even though he's got that little weird finish sometimes, like it's unbelievable. It's like it's almost Arnie-esque, but not as painful to watch because Arnie looks like he does that but then breaks his back. Um, (laughs) But, yeah, it's like that helicopter finish. It's like what I kind of do when I'm trying to go anti-hook. Yeah, he's – I can't – I think that question's too on the spot for me to answer as most underrated of our generation. But, I mean, like I said, he's got a U.S. Open and a, and a player's championship maybe at the peak of his career. Yeah. Like, like I don't even know if he's peaked yet. Like, he could be – There's definitely more wins than – more big-time wins. He doesn't have the number of wins. He's got seven career wins on the PGA Tour. But two of them are U.S. Open and player's championship. Those are big. Really big. I don't know if he's a Hall of Famer yet, T-Bone, though. I think he's well on his way. Uh, maybe one more major will put him there or something like that. But he, yeah. he would be on the cusp, I think. If he for sure reaches double-digit wins, then I think he's in with those majors and players. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, well, Also, I want to give a shout-out to Abraham Answer. He missed seven greens the entire week. Oh, my gosh. And didn't it, win. If he would have won this week, I would have lost it because I bet on him last week, and I would have probably had, like, I think it was like 450 I would have won. Yeah. And he was there. He was – I mean, he was – I think he was T6 on the final day, and at the, at the, on, after the first day, he was one back, I think. So, he played well. But if he would have won this week, it would just kind of pour salt in the wounds. Right. I mean, good yeah. week overall. Go ahead, t Daniel Berger is still hot. Yep. <laughs> Um, but again, yeah. <laughs> dude, I mean, how do you, it, that just shows you that is the perfect swing to show somebody that there's not one specific way to hit a golf ball. Like I joke with Scott about being laid off all the time. Does that like not hurt you to watch? Like, how does that guy? No wonder he had wrist problems. So well, and it's uh, it's painful. Yep, I he's always got fat ass chawing. Yeah. He look, kind of looks like a meth head, too. Um, and I don't know if you guys saw the clubs in his bag from last week, but he's playing a set of tailor-made irons from 2011. Nice. And I don't even think he's sponsored by him. I think he's sponsored by Callaway, but he's just using these old tailor-made irons. And he's saying, he's like, I'm going to keep buying them on eBay. So if you have a set, I don't can't, I can't remember what they are at the top of my head, but. Could be selling your clubs with Daniel Berger. I think I got some R7 TPs hanging around somewhere. <laughs> there you go. Maybe a and little little more updated than those. Also, really uh, quiet top 10 finish from Justin Thomas and DeChambeau. Sergio, also in the mix. Terrell Hatton, he's just a character, I think. He's, I he's good for guy. TV. Did you see uh, JT's pants on a Sunday? Oh, yeah. Those were beautiful. Good. No, I didn't. Were those not just glorious? Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't bring that up, T-Bone. This thing's really yeah. phenomenal. Is that your That's fashion, very good. T-Bone? Yeah. Uh, I could touch on a little fashion. Um, I think one of the, the weakest moves you can do on a golf course is the, uh, the like, arm sleeves that um, Dylan Fratelli wears. Ooh. I don't know if you guys saw those, but they're, like, yeah. solar protective arm sleeves. I mean, that's just weak. <laughs> You think it's going? Uh, he's trying to protect himself from the sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at KJ's face. Look at my face. That's how you do it. I haven't used sunscreen since like middle school, man. I'm I'm, I'm hitting it hard. Uh, and yeah, and then there's another guy out there who I can't remember his name, but he keeps rocking these um, joggers that are like showing his ankles. And it's just a, no, well, no. It's Eric Van uh, Van Wooling. Yeah. Van yeah. Rocking. Van Ruin. Yeah. 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 So that's that's a disgrace. He's a foreigner. Um, that's what he, they 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 love that fancy shit over there. Yeah. The trendy shit. I mean, he's a <laughs> South African, if I'm not believing. You're gonna catch me dead in a pair of joggers. I guarantee you. That. <laughs> <laughs> uh, AJ, if if you're wearing joggers, then hell has frozen over. I think. Yeah. So, hey, not I guess me, baby. Joggers. Ricky Fowler dropped out of the top thirty in the world for the first time since like 2014. Webb mm. Simpson is way better than Ricky Fowler's, put it that way. It's crazy. But Ricky's a lot more marketable. That's what yep. people care about. Yep. So uh, we got four minutes here, guys, before Zoom kicks us off. 
next week, Travelers, do y'all have any picks that you like for the Travelers? Give us two or three names. T-Bone, start us off. You want to hear this? Go you want to hear this story that I see formulating? Um, the Travelers 2020 champion champion is going to be Kepka, but not Brooks. Oh, yeah? His brother qualified today, shot a 65, <laughs> uh, got into a five-man playoff for two spots and made it. Brooks was out there, cheered him on. Wow. So that could be a story, but you know what? I'm actually not going to do that. Um, but, you know, just just makes you think a little bit. I like it. But um, I think I'm going to take um, my boy Patrick Cantlay. Um, he's kind of one of my common picks. He He did well for me in the Masters last year, and I don't really know if he's played. If he has, he's done terrible, and he's got to be due, right? So, um, yeah, I like that. Um, I think it's time for Spieth to uh, to get the title back, the Travelers. Um, I think it was the Travelers where he hold out on Daniel Berger. Yeah, on the bunker. Maybe well, maybe a repeat playoff. Both of them are playing pretty good again. So, we'll right, go with K- that. And then, yeah, no, we, we're, we're running low on time. KJ, I'll, go ahead. I'm going to take JT. All right. And Abraham answer. I like it. So, guys, you finished both in the top ten this last week. You're taken. Why don't you just go and take Roy McIlroy while you're at it, KJ? No. Okay. Abraham answer is kind of the dark horse. Who do you get? A little bit, yeah. I'll give you that. He got. He's famous for uh, asking to take on Tiger in the Presidents Cup and losing. And getting he got worse. he yeah. got screwed over on that comment. He was he like. Did. He was like, guys, all I was saying was I just would like to play him. And everyone's like, you got owned, motherfucker, by Tiger Woods. <laughs> and then people started cropping videos of Tiger walking after his putt after, like, a step. So I will defend Abraham in that because he right. has gotten destroyed. He was like, what Man, the fuck, guys? The- I just said I wanted to play. <laughs> the internet play was him. undefeated <laughs> on that one. Uh, I'm going to go with Bubba Watson. Because he's won there before. And Bubba, I think he has 10 PJ Tour wins He's in, uh, across like three different courses. Like he only wins on certain courses. He's won here before. I'm going to go Bubba Watson as well as Kevin Kisner. There we go. Ooh, kiss. Love it. Kiss. Uh, we're running low on time. Thanks, everybody, again for tuning in. Write those reviews. Again, box of Pro V's or three and a par pot hat. They're coming in in the next week and a half or so. Write those. Give us five stars as well. Apple Podcast. That way I know we see it. I'll text you or DM you, uh, or if you do write it and I don't know who you are, let me know. Follow us on social media at 300 Par Pod. That is the number three, 300 Par Pod. DMs are open there. We got some guests. Also, new podcast is going to be just an interview with a YouTube golfer, 4 to 4 Golf, Dave uh, Gapes. It's coming out on Thursday. And uh, stay tuned for Tanner Beard, attached right now at the end of this. Fellas, thanks. Hope everybody's doing well. And remember, little white ball is life. Okay, we are now joined by a very special guest. Somebody that I've been looking forward to a very long time. We have Mr. Tanner Beard from Holy Moly. Tanner, how's it going, man? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. Uh, I'm enjoying some nice weather here in Mammoth Lakes, California. And uh, about to go play some golf, actually. And that's very jealous it's really rainy right here also we're approaching the dog days of july and august especially down here in houston oh it's brutal you're from texas from snyder texas what are those summers like are you able to play some golf definitely definitely the uh the heat aspect but it's a lot more dry there i I remember I, i shot a film in uh in houston and i remember it being on the fourth of july it's a little bum i had to miss the fourth of july because we were working through it but uh, I just remember thinking, like, I've never experienced, like, a, a Houston summer like I did when we were on that picture. And, like, the mosquitoes would bite through your clothes in some places, like, a little yep. bit further, uh, closer to, like, Galveston and stuff. But we filmed in that whole area. And I just remember thinking, like, man, there are some tough people in Houston, Texas. Texas knows how to grow them tough. Living yes. with those people. So you're, you're prepared for that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I grew up playing the game. So like junior golf and July and summer we're walking too. So it was, 
Yeah, it was a lot. But then again, you know, you go out to West Texas. You're they you're not playing that like thick air too. You're like, I'm a club up right here, actually. Exactly. Well, I learned how to keep the ball down so that would just pierce through the air. That's what I was. Yeah, I was trying to do. keep it down in that West Texas wind. You know, you're just back off the back foot the whole time. <laughs> there's, you know, golf is huge in Texas, man. It's. I think that's one of the reasons I was so interested in in it as a you know a younger dude growing up because it was just so big even in my hometown of Snyder which isn't a big you know community but they have a lot of love for their golf there and stuff so Texas is just it's it's enriched with golf it's the Florida of golf <laughs> it is it really is I mean even if you go back as far as Byron Nelson Ben Hogan like these uh legends and then you got Crenshaw Justin Leonard now yeah. Jordan Spieth, Spieth I mean back in action it was fun to watch him like be at the top of the leaderboard last couple of tournaments so yes uh, it's been fun it really is. Uh, we're big speed fans here at Thrinder Park. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, just because we grew up playing against him and, and throughout oh. the junior ranks. Yes, yeah, yeah. so we're about the same age, and, I mean, he was just dominating all of us. <laughs> he was at UT, right? I'm sorry? He, was, he went to UT, right? Correct, yeah. So he's from Dallas, went to UT for a year, and then won the John Deere, and then the rest is history right. pretty much. Hello so. world after that, like Tiger said, right? Yeah, yeah. hello world, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I think Jordan – I mean, we could talk about Jordan all day, it seems like, but I think he's in the right direction. Hopefully Dude, he's a good thing for him is this coronavirus thing was able to let him work out some issues, I think. Oh, yeah. And the guy – I mean, he's got just so many years ahead of him. It's crazy to think, like, because Tiger's still out there killing it, and Mickelson is probably, you know, one we should marvel at the most because I just remember watching him as, you know, like in seventh, eighth grade for me, which was like 98, <laughs> you know. So the fact that, like, you still see some of those guys out there, it's just a testament to, like, how long your career can go on the PGA Tour. These guys are in their, like, you know, mid-20s out there. They're going to be around for a while. They'll be, they'll be household names forever, you know. Absolutely. Phil, I believe, just turned 50. So happy birthday, yeah. Phil Nicholson. 50 years old and still hitting well, bombs. He, looks better. he like, looks better now than he did, like, a couple of years ago. You look at old pictures of Phil, and you're like, he looks way better now. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, Tanner, obviously you are more than just a contestant on Holy Moly, actor, producer, uh, but this is a golf podcast. So we're going to focus a little bit more hone in on the golf. So you mentioned you're from West Texas, Snyder, Texas. Uh, how did you end up in California and also give us your background in golf? Yeah, well, I grew up playing, like you said, in Snyder, Texas, home of the white buffalo. Uh, which later became my nickname on Holy Moly, which was pretty cool. The White Buffalo it could be worse. I'm going to ask about that, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Somebody just actually just drew me a picture of it. I, I, I was like freaking out. I was like, it's too cool. But um, so I grew up playing golf with my granddad, man, uh, Gerald Beard. He's he's still out there in Snyder, Texas. The guy just had uh, his seventh hole-in-one a couple weeks ago, which was just incredible. So um, great. We're actually going to do a tournament in his honor come September 11th, uh, where he'll turn 90 years old, and it's uh, something we're doing for the Mammoth Media Institute organization. We can talk about that later. But, um, yeah, man, just through seventh grade, just uh, got on the golf team, and that really kicked it into gear. But I just kind of started to fall in love with golf around 97 when Tiger Woods, you know, won the Masters. I think everybody caught the, the Tiger bug after that. Uh, but it was just something I always wanted to do. I, I think I wanted to be a pro golfer uh, until I got into the motion picture business. <laughs> and, uh, and then actually that became, you know, my, my true love. But the, the later on, you know, uh, through the, the years of being in the, the movie industry and stuff like that, it's really cool that – now with what's going on in, in, in my career and what we're doing, uh, those two paths have crossed. And so it's like, I get to play a lot of golf and it's business related, you know what I mean? Or charity related for what we're doing with the organization. Cause we have a five day festival in Mammoth Lakes, California, the Mammoth Film Festival, you know, what are you going to do the other 360 days? You know, so we do a lot of sporting events to, to raise causes for our, our raise awareness for our causes. And it's just really cool. Like I said, those kind of got to, to intermingle, but I moved out to LA uh, to, to start my, uh, you know, acting and filmmaking career when I was like 18. So kind of set golf down for several years, but I've been, I've been I'm back to playing like tournament competition on the biggest amateur level. Uh, mostly everybody just wants to be on their scramble golf team because I can I can hit the ball pretty far every once in a while if I connect with it. But uh, it's it's cool, <laughs> right. man. Two, two of my loves, uh, you know, movie industry and golf are, are kind of uniting right now, and it's pretty exciting. Definitely, and I feel like Holy Moly is one of those 
it's you know golf can be kind of stale sometimes it kind of rubs people the wrong way yeah. it's more of your old person country club snooty sport but holy moly seems like it's more of a fun interactive even though it is pup pup but it, i mean yeah. i saw you rocking the scotty cameron out nope. there like the real golf ball I'm so i don't leave home without my scotty man uh, it is cool <laughs> that, that they let you bring your own putter on the show because i know that there's if you don't have a putter i think odyssey was one of the sponsors okay and they make great putters but i was like man i'm like this is for this is for a lot of money <laughs> you know what i mean i want to feel confident because uh, and this is something I've, I've told somebody else. The cool thing about Holy Moly and what levels the playing field is, you know, you can be a professional golfer and be the best putter on the planet. Um, but what the course does is you could also be, you know, an accountant from Idaho that barely gets to play that likes mini golf. And you put those two together with the elements of the course, you know, to get through it. Like it's a stroke penalty. If you fall in the water, like physically your body falls in the water. It's a stroke right. penalty. So the playing field gets really even. You may hit a great shot, but, you know, it's mini golf. Somebody may just, like, bank it three times off of something, and it gets really lucky. So it's really fun to have no idea who's going to win. Uh, and your skill level is really brought down to, you know, it being very much, okay, me versus you with, you know, no, no tricks in between. So it's pretty cool. Right. You're not bombing 300-yard drives out there. Yeah. It's yeah. a little gimmicky at times, but that's Very what's fun about those it. 30-yard putt bombs, you know, that's the one you're uh, – <laughs> Yeah, exactly. How did you hear about Holy Moly and, get a, and become a contestant on the show? Yeah. Uh, interesting, man. Just, again, just so much luck, but in turn putting yourself out there to, to obtain that luck, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd started a uh, kind of a golf Instagram account where we're doing some really cool stuff with uh, just for lack of better words, Tanner Beard Golf. Uh, we're doing some cool branding and stuff like that. So I introduced, uh, you know, just putting some content out there, just getting being a little bit more uh, vocal in the golf world and, and getting back to it now that I had the time. And I got a DM actually through Instagram through uh, one of the casting associates for ABC. And I think they go out and look for golfers, you know, for a golf show, which would make total sense. Yeah. And anyway, uh, it, you know, it was a long process of vetting. I think they need to make sure you're not a serial killer. Uh, sure. And, and it was just, you know, just ABC's uh, just really lucky, man. ABC hit me up on, on a DM through their casting and was able to get, you know, lucky enough to get selected for the show. But it was about seven or eight audition processes, I think, after that. You even got to, like, hit some golf shots, and, and they want to make sure you can putt because they want it to be a competition, you right. know, first and foremost. Um, and then you just got to be physically able and then sign your life away in case you get eaten by a shark on the show. Oh, of course. I saw you did a nice little jump onto the moving yeah, shark. Luckily, luckily, my face caught the dorsal fin and I was able to hang on. <laughs> and then yeah. just hanging on for dear life, man. Yeah, that is wild. Man, awesome. Yeah, no, it seems like a good show. You know, one of our things here at Three and Par, we just we want to make golf fun, enjoyable. And I think shows like Holy Moly are are great. It definitely helps when you got guys like Rob Riggle who are just hilarious out there. Rob Riggle's hilarious, man. And uh, <laughs> even on my prior episode, I'm sure you saw it, but he like, he joined the Buffalo herd down there, which was like just hilarious. And I, I'm playing the game. So I know my friends and family were there and I was fortunate to have like a lot of, you know, high profile buddies come out and, and, and cheer me on and stuff, but who wouldn't want to go see their friend fall on their face? I mean, I know I would go. Um, absolutely i would like a show why it's like it's the best but uh i looked over and i was like about to putt and it was like rob riggle and he's like come on tenner and i'm like what is going on right now so it just added like that much more pressure i'm like oh my god I, now i gotta make this putt right but, uh, a crazy turn of circumstances too with me uh you know i'd actually lost uh my second hole and then uh as fate would have it there was a gentleman who was not able to come back to the show which left an open spot to move forward. So Carl Barth and I got to have a playoff hole. Right. And, and uh, it was, it was brief in the show, but like, you know, it was that, that alone, you know, just the, the playoff hole with him was nerve wracking, man, you know, and he just missed his to his left and I was able to make mine and then, um, and then moved on to the windmill hole, which was, which was funny. Cause every, I got a few like, you know, tweets and stuff. It's like, why did your ball look like it was moved on the final hole? And I guess if you, you know, don't know the aspect of the show, like it's cut for time. So what right. happened was uh, Clay actually missed his shot. And then I just missed my shot, which left my ball 
in a different place, obviously. Oh. So then I made mine. I made my third shot on the windmill hole, and Clay just missed his, which gave me the win. Right. And it wasn't necessarily edited like that. So uh, people were like, hey, what's going on here? Oh, like, man. Fishy. And I was like, yeah, I guess it kind of did. So I tried to explain it, but it's not my job to explain it, man. It's just, it is, it's the same outcome. It doesn't matter. But uh, I was yeah. just at least trying to clear the air that, that there's no cheating going on in the show. You can't. It's impossible. But Yeah, too many eyeballs. Uh, I yeah, did want to bring up your – there just to make sure, like, the rules are run properly. So, right. Yeah. I, I did want to bring up your – your sudden death putt because it looked like you started walking that thing in from like eight feet out. You were pulling a cabin oh, knot yeah. t- with the putter raise. Like Dude, I thought you're going to be the tiger and that, point at the hole too. That was the power of the Scotty Cameron that day, man. <laughs> I, I was, they, and they, they amp it up. I mean, they wanted me to, and scary Mary to like really talk smack to each other, you know, but I was so winded after being on that damn hole. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was, we were like the sixth ones to go. So the entire mountain is just goo. You know, like, if like, even like, at least the first people, like, they have a little bit of like, you know, the substance that they put on there. But when you're the last ones to go, the whole mountain's just covered in like this lube that you can't get up. Right. And I'm just like, you're going to have to toss down the rope on this one. So she made a putt like two feet away. And I'm like, I can't believe I've shown up to this show. I got my friends and family here. Like, I can't miss this putt. And it was like a 13 <laughs> footer up against the rail. Uh, so nails. That was it, nails. You couldn't that one went in. But yeah, I think yeah. I. I willed it in more than it was actually a good putt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what did Arnold Palmer say? The more we practice, the luckier he gets. Rather yeah. be lucky than good. Better be lucky than good, man. I'll take it. No doubt. Yeah, I like how you just casually brushed over to like, oh, I had some pretty famous friends jumping, <laughs> you know, there to support you. What was it like having? It was cool. It's uh, I got some. I got a great set of friends out here. Uh, uh, Zach came by. Ashley Green was out there. Yeah. Uh, my best friends, you know, Ryan Rotman, Tom McMaster, Blair Redford was out there. Uh, Alexandra Chando. I mean, Damal came out. Uh, it was it was a tremendous. I mean, you know, you think what it did for the show too. ABC was really happy. They're like, "Who the hell are you? And why are all these people here?" And I'm like, I don't know, man. But uh, they're, they're rooting me on. So the, the pressure was on probably more immensely after that. But I noticed they kept like cherry picking my friends out of the crowd and, and talking to them. So it was, it was cool. Everybody got to, you know, experience it just as much as I did. Right. Yeah. It's one of those uh, unintended blessings, if you will. It's like, Oh, yeah. we got this guy who's creating good golf content. Oh yeah. He has some pretty cool friends. too. <laughs> but. Yeah. No, it's uh, just a product of being in the movie industry, man. I got a bunch of uh, incredibly talented friends that, you know, gotten to come up with through the years. And so uh, it's, right. it's pretty cool that we also, we got a great support team. You know, we're, we, we kind of have a family out there where it's uh, every man for himself in LA. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, whenever I think of, I guess, Hollywood, for lack of a better term, and golf, uh, my mind just always goes to Entourage for some reason, whether it be like <laughs> Vince and the boys out there with Ari Gold. Uh, yeah. Do a lot of people in the Hollywood scene like to golf or what is that like? Man, I play golf with, you know, so many people that are in the business, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. the headline, you know, the the New Line Cinema, uh, just you name it, like, it's not just actors, it's, uh, I mean, everybody, who doesn't like golf, you know what I mean, but it is, uh, I think, it's that sport where people go and it's like, hey, man, if you can, like, be good on the golf course, you're probably handling business and life pretty well, too, because it's such an, an intricate game. Uh, I think a lot of people in, in business, I guess, are a little bit more prone to do it because it's it's a challenge, and a, a lot of uh, leaders like that challenge. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and it and it wields true because I've I've just played golf with like so many executives and stuff, and it's a lot of business gets done on the golf course. You know, in my industry, so uh, it it pays to it, it pays to hit those three hundred and thirty yard bombs. So they want you on their scramble team for the cool tournaments. That's right. <laughs> and chicks take the long ball. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. It's um, especially, yeah, golf in the business world. I've actually kind of found, and I don't know if you, this, if you found this too, but a lot of the like top business guys that play golf, they actually don't like talking business on the golf course because it's almost like their escape. Yeah. And then it's more like you go to the 19th hole afterwards, like, okay, now we can talk a little bit more. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's very, that, that's very true. That's a yeah. True. Well, but, well, but you can also tell somebody's character. I think it was Lou Holtz said, you know, if you want to find out somebody's character, go play a round of golf with them. Sure. Yeah. Well, also it's too, it's like, is this guy going to make this 10 footer for par? You know, like how much does he, 
how much does he care? How much is he out there to finagle? How much does the, the game mean to him? It's, it, it, it's, you, you said it yourself, man. It shows everybody's kind of true character, how people, how angry get, you know, people get when they slam a club or don't slam a club that what they laugh right. off. It's, it's pretty cool, man. It's, it's a game that's, uh, that's always been part of, you know, my life since, since I can remember, man. So very grateful for that. Absolutely. So we were kind of talking about Jordan Spieth a little bit. Who are some other golfers? You mentioned Tiger kind of got you, your interest peaked into the game. Who are some other guys you like to cheer for out on tour? Yeah, I mean, the Tiger, I'll watch him mow his lawn. You know what I mean? He's, he's just so interesting to, to – I just got constantly learning from it. He's constantly changing his game. Uh, I like to watch uh, – man, I'm a huge fan of Ricky Fowler. Okay. Uh, I love to watch Fowler on the course, man. He's just a, he's just a, just comes from such an interesting background, you know, having a motocross background. Um, DeChambeau, I don't know, not, not the big way or anything. I've just been watching him lately because he's just, he's turned into this Hulk monster. <laughs> so he's been fun to watch lately because I'm like, dude, did he just rip that like 356 yards? Um, Kepka's always one to watch, but um, I don't mind saying the dude's personality, like, kind of. I don't know. It kind of turns me off a little bit, but I can you know, see that. At the end of the day, he's a fucking beast. You know, he's oh, incredible. Uh, pardon my language. I probably shouldn't say that. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, man, I like Jordan Spieth, dude. Just keeping it. You know, he's a he's a good old fashioned Texan, man. So uh, so I'm always rooting for the home squad. Absolutely. Yeah, Bryson. Man, we're really. I'm torn on Bryson because it's like we got good Bryson, we got bad Bryson. But like, mad respect yeah. to what he's doing. Dude, he's putting on all that weight. Just came up a little bit, and I heard some like older gentlemen were like, "No, we need to create a ball that you can only hit eighty percent of what you think." And I'm like, "Look, the game has been redefining itself since you know metal clubs. So yeah. you know, let's not stop like the progression. Obviously, we don't need to have microchips and balls or anything like that. Like, let the game be the game. But I, I, I mean, I just got the new sim driver, and I'm I'm cranking that thing 25 yards further than my old driver. Wow! You know what I mean? So who doesn't okay. want to do that? You know, I, we're all getting older. We all want to hit it further. We're not going to stay 22, 23, ripping it 330 every shot. So to be able to right. do that 33, 34 with the new technology, I'm all about that. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. You know, that's really the USGA distance report, distance debate. I mean, we can, we've talked about that before. I don't want to go into that right now, but I've heard good, interesting arguments for like a, like how professional baseball players use wooden bats, but amateurs use metal bats, yeah. have something like that. But then again, you're telling me if I'm on the pro tour, I've been playing golf a certain way all this time. And then you got to <laughs> dial it back. Like that doesn't sound funny. From the forties. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, yeah. No. I think it's just. I think it's just people being vocal about. You know. I mean. Hell. It's easy for me to say that. I haven't been. In, I'm not Colin Montgomery. I haven't been in the game for 50 years. You know what I mean. So. Yeah. Uh, it's. Uh, it's to, to each their own, I guess. But uh, all the um, club makers out there, please do not redefine your technology and keep it uh, Elon Musk and reinventing. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Little Elon. <laughs> Elon throwback. Yes. So you mentioned you're out in the Mammoth Flakes area. What are some of the courses that you like to go out and go get around in? Um, you know, Bishop Country Club down the street is actually such a great course to just go and have a blast at, you know, because there's so many pine trees up here. Uh, Sierra Star in Mammoth Lakes, California. I think it's one of the highest elevated golf courses in the nation. So you're hitting like pitching wedge 160, 170. It's crazy, but you can also crank that driver like you've never done it before. It's so much fun. But I mean, it's like fairway and then the trees are like this. So it's like, you got to hit my face if you're coming out. <laughs> but um, it's so much fun, dude. And it's so beautiful. Even if like you're, you know, you duff to chip, you look up and it's just like, you know, you might see a bear crawling through the woods and like an eagle fly over the mountain and you're just like, it doesn't even matter. This course is so phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And then a uh, snow Creek up here is, uh, is pretty great. But my favorite course I think is still Lakeside golf club in, in uh, Toluca Lake where, uh, where I live. It's, if you, if you look it up, it's kind of like old Hollywood classic golf course, you know, uh, Bob Hope still has his locker up there that uh, is preserved. So oh, it's great. It's kind of classic old Hollywood course. Like, you know, you can still smell the rat pack in the locker room, you know, <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So if you, if you do some history on that, every, all your listeners check out Lakeside golf club. It's uh, my favorite course on the planet. I think. 
Yes. When I hear Lakeside, there's a Lakeside club here in the Houston area that's probably, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes from where I live. So, oh, yeah. but it's like, one of those. You're like, like, my Lakeside? <laughs> yeah, for real. I was like, <laughs> like, it's a good course, but. <laughs> yeah. It's a good farm, Tanner. What are you talking about? Right. Oh, exactly. Cool. Yeah. I love playing up in the mountains or up in the hills. I don't really do it that often. You know, if you go down to Austin or San Antonio, you get yeah. that hill country More golf. Country. Yeah. But it's so flat here in Houston. And there's no wind. It's so humid that, like, it's always a nice change of pace. So whenever I hear, like, oh, it's five minutes from now, I get a little jealous. Sure. There is something, too, though. It's like if, you're, if you love to pull out the big dog and let it eat, it, you know, you're hitting six iron off of so many tee boxes. It's You hone in your skills when there's so many trees. Because if you go two, you know, two feet into the woods, you don't find your ball. And you're like, it's not that hard. It's so, there's so much down there. It's like 50, it's under buried under 15 pine cones now. <laughs> uh, but with that said, I feel like I go. I'll go play. I'll go play something. Uh, you know, like Angeles National uh, Jack Nicklaus course there in Los Angeles, and then I'll just rock and roll it because I'm so used to precision shots now that you know it's like that, those courses become a lot easier. And that's been you know it's kind of helped me with my amateur tournament play. Ah, uh, of course. Uh, and those little those little tournaments come up. It's like, damn, dude, I just I'm, I'm averaging in the 70s. It's right where I want to be. You know. Right. That's perfect. Yeah. And um, I mean, there's so many different types of amateur tournaments you can play in too, whether it be like, I'm sure there's the California golf association, like here you got the Texas golf association or, you know, just go have fun. If you want to go play at a com competitive level, go do it. If you just yeah. like the four man scrambles too, like go do that. It's, that's one thing I love about the game is that you, there's so many different ranges. I, my, just my biggest request is just keep up pace of play. Big deal. Oh yeah. I know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a quick guy too. I'm like, you don't need six practice swings, fella. <laughs> uh, it is, dude, I'm, I'm probably the worst too. Cause like I usually have like a buddy or two or maybe I don't have like that foursome that goes out there all the time. Cause I'm traveling so much, but I usually have like a buddy or something I'll play with and we always get paired with other people. And I'm always like, Hey man, we're just going to go ahead. We're just going to – you guys do your – you have to have your fun, have a blast. We're just going to zoom on to this next hole because we're usually playing so slow that, like, the people in front of us got way far ahead. And you're like, you guys have a blast. We don't want to get in your way. We're going to jam on to the next hole. So right. I always finagle my way to play with <laughs> just my friends. Right. Uh, yeah, just the friends. Yeah. That way you're a little more comfortable, maybe blast that music a little higher. You know, just, like, turn up the, turn up the Yacht Rock just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh so going back to holy moly real quick sure pretty electric holes out there you were talking about the slip inside the actually one that the plank out there uh so electric is a great word <laughs> <laughs> which one was your personal favorite and which one gave you the most trouble well so you don't play every single hole Okay. Uh, I didn't get to play every single one of them but there was a few that I was you know you would go out on the track and you'd be like I don't want to play Uranus. It just looks like you're going to fall on those planets. Uh, and it also has obviously the funniest name on the planet, but, on the planet. Um, but you know, it's crazy. I saw so many people play that hole. So we get hole in ones on it. And if you get a hole in one, you don't have to do the obstacle. You just automatically won, but right. you know, double Dutch courage, the windmill hole it gave me nightmares. And then if sure enough, I, that's one of the ones I played, um, you know, slip and putt was, just a, it's another classic from season one and it just wrecked me <laughs> but, but at the end of the day uh no matter what the obstacle is you still have to make the putt and that's where again it comes back to like okay this person with you know who's physically not as capable as this person fell in the water but now this person's not as good a golfer so let's watch them struggle on the on the putt where they might have done really well getting across the planets or not getting hit by the windmill um but i will say when you see your opponent get hit you're like yes okay now now <laughs> i just gotta do the same thing but not get hit yeah. uh, there's uh, the rubber ducky one the rubber ducky hole looked really difficult i'm glad i didn't have to do that uh the one where you put the big wave uh i don't know if you're familiar with that one or not yeah that looks intense well you just it's such a difficult shot like i've seen dudes like hit it off to the left now and it's going like in the water and i'm like i never had to play that one but uh there's i you know it's like you 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 get out there and you want to play them all, but then you realize how difficult all these holes are. You're like, no, no, no I'm, just playing the one. I'm going to focus in on the one that I'm playing. I want right. to do my best at that one. But uh, yeah, it's, it's such a fun show and the ratings just keep getting higher and higher. More people are getting into it. I've even had people DM me and say, you know, I've never watched the show before. I want to go buy some golf clubs now. So right. uh, that's a real positive thing. 
It really is. You got, yeah, between that and Top Golf, you have to spread oh, the word. Just all oh, right. It's so much fun. And when I first hit the scene several years ago, I was just like, "This is where I'll be hanging out now." You know, right. such a genius idea. I love all those guys at Top Golf. For sure. Uh, yeah, Texas company too. So yeah, Texas you know, forever. You know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yes. Um, well, Tanner. I think that's all I got, man. So, well, you're obviously, your profession is Hollywood. You're very familiar with the industry and the business, but being a contestant on a show, what was that experience like with your knowledge and background? Uh, was it good, bad? How'd that rate? Um, I will say, I think just me, you know, uh, have, I've, I've done like 30 some odd movies, uh, you know, been around the business for a long time got to produce some really big movies with like Christian Bale and some people like that. So and Brad Pitt recently too, right? Did I yeah. That? I produced a movie with Brad Pitt called Voyage of Time, which is exclusively an IMAX. It is just right. amazing, amazing film from Terrence Malick, but uh, it's just unreal. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that transferred over. Uh, my cousin actually told me who was there. He was like, dude, you know what? You're lucky that you're in the movie business with some of these putts because I see people up there really shaking, really, you know, it's their first time to be and one of the biggest fears in the world is like speaking in front of a crowd. So imagine right. in front of one. And I had that just, just, just as much as anybody, but I think, uh, you know, me being on so many sets and stuff like that, I took it in as like, okay, I'm playing the golfer character trying to, you know, I think my mind went there as like kind of an actor, uh, rather than, you know, taking it, being too hyper aware and being like, Oh God, this putt is at a chance for $250,000. You know what I mean? And just, right. so I was able to kind of just go into autopilot, I think, which, uh, which helped a lot, but, uh, be like, uh Oh, happy learned how the putt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Somebody's close. Right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we, did a little, we just went to my happy place. Exactly. Exactly. What's your favorite golf movie? Going off that. Oh God, I've seen Happy Gilmore more than any movie besides Tombstone. I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Happy Gilmore. I mean, I was like in sixth grade when that came out. I just started playing the, on a golf team. Like it was like the, the movie you had to watch. You know, we, absolutely. I can, quote, I can still quote every line from that movie. Oh yeah, You're like man, yeah, the, the, there's so many quotable lines well, like making it go. Uh, you know, I'm a probably Happy Gilmore or the greatest game ever played. Oh yeah, was Shia right? Yes. yes, with Shia yes. LaBeouf, especially since I, I was watching like some sort of behind the scenes at one point, and Shia LaBeouf apparently had never played golf, before, but he really wanted that role, right. and so he had to work really hard because if you're going to make a pretty serious golf movie and you're you don't get annihilated if your swing isn't perfect from the audience. exactly, so mad respect to Shia LaBeouf making it look like his swing could yeah hold I up. Still, I wonder if he still plays. Right. And then uh, I'm also a big Game of Thrones fan. So knowing now the actor who played Stannis Baratheon is in The Greatest Game Ever Played, too. So uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Playing Harry Varden. And, um, you know, I still have a good Caddyshack movie, but uh, it's as the years go by, it still stands the test of time, but it's, it's getting a little older. You know, like a lot of people wouldn't know what Bushwood Country Club is now, especially with the with those young whippersnappers around these days. Right. <laughs> you do drugs, Danny? Go. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Caddyshacks, I mean, it's an all-time classic. I'm a huge Chevy Chase fan still, so. Definitely. Uh, I'm, I'm still a fan of the little gopher. And Bill Murray. Um, it seems like Bill Murray – I don't know if he became a golfer after that movie around that time, but I mean, he's always making his Pebble Beach debut. Golf brand now. Uh, even pro tour players are wearing Bill Murray golf clothes. I, I think the guy, the PXG guy, uh, Perez, is, uh, yeah. is rocking Bill Murray golf, or it's William Murray golf. So, uh, but That's hey, wild. speaking of uh, some really cool golf stuff, um, Tanner Beard Golf is uh, putting out some, some, just some, some hats, some t shirts, some apparel. Uh, to kind of raise money for the Mammoth Media Institute. Half the proceeds are going to go uh, to our, our nonprofit organization so we can continue to do what we do. But all that stuff's going to drop uh, probably sometime in September. So okay. closer, to, closer to the Gerald Beard Golf Classic that we got coming up. And then uh, we do our big tournament in October in Los Angeles. If you uh, haven't been out to L.A. in a while or ever, uh, it's a good excuse to go. But we do a uh, – Massive golf tournament, uh, the Mammoth Media Institute Open, uh, usually at Angeles National. I think we're going to be on uh, for there again. But uh, it'll be around October 2nd or maybe the following week, like I said, with COVID and everything else that's going on in the world. We're, we're taking it one day at a time, but we're, 
we're putting the positive energy out there that we'll be able to play and it's going to be a great tournament. Oh, that's great to hear. Everybody go place your pre-orders. Yeah. Get, get, those, get those cool shirts with the white Buffalo on them. Yeah. I got some buddies out in LA. They're loyal listeners. So hope they're, they're oh, listening. Yeah. So oh, I've been meaning awesome. to check a trip out there. Yeah. The Mammoth Media Institute open. It's, it's ready for everybody. All right. So you make it to the finale of Holy Moly. That's coming out later though. Yep. What can you tell us? I know there's like closely guarded secrets. So, uh, what can you tell us? That Steph Curry has concocted uh, his hole and it's uh, Egypt themed. I think it's called the hole of Nefertiti from what okay. I've seen on the show. Sounds intense. Uh, and it sounds like it'll be 12 jacket winners enter the finale down to four. And then uh, those four will have a putt at $250,000. So uh, I just hope to out of those twelve, I make it to that final four, and and then we'll we'll see what happens, man. I'm keeping the faith. Keep the faith. Cheering for Tanner Beard. I know I'm gonna be watching. <laughs> Hopefully, everyone out there will yeah. be watching too. End of August will be the finale, but keep watching the show. It's hilarious. There's six more jackets uh, to hand out, if not uh, seven. So uh, it's it's gonna be uh, nonstop. You know, summer entertainment. A uh, lot of places that I know courses still aren't open fully for some people. Wow. So well, at least they're getting their sports fixed now that the PJ tour is back and uh, Holy Moly, which offers a little something different in the golf community, which I'm a big fan of. And uh, you got Rob Riggle. What else do you need? You got, and Joe Tessitore is just I'm about to say Joe is dynamic man is, is awesome. And Jenny Mai out there uh, making it happen. But yeah, man, thank you so much for having me on. It's been great talking to you. Uh, we'll have to send you some information on the Gerald Beard Classic, our Texas tournament. Please uh, do. Some, some Texas golfers out there. If you guys want to get out of the, the heat in Houston, come to the dry heat in Snyder. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, well, we got listeners even all over the country, few cool. all over the world too, but world, but we're trying to grow. But uh, what's the best pl- – do you fly in the DFW or go more Abilene, or what's the best way to get there? Uh, to get to Snyder? Yeah. yeah. Lubbock, Abilene, or Midland, and then okay. you, know, you got to shoot over if you're going to fly in. Uh, I'm actually going to fly into Midland and rent a car and drive over to, to Snyder. Cool. Unfortunately, where I grew up in a rural town, uh, home of the White Buffalo, though. Uh, there's, no, there's, no, there's not much around, man. We'd have to go to, like, <laughs> love it just to get, like, school clothes and stuff as a kid. But uh, Wow. I love it, man. I wouldn't have it any other way. It's salt of the earth, though. I mean, you want to talk about good old folk in Texas, go to a small town in Texas, and they'll treat you right. Yeah. I love and it. It's one of the best. It's, it's a ranked nine-hole golf course. So uh, okay, check it out. It's uh, Western Texas College, uh, Sammy Ball Golf Course. Um, all right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so- Tanner, what are some social media plugs for – people to follow yeah. you, or uh, you know, check me out at uh, on instagram tanner beard golf uh and then twitter facebook the whole nine it's just at tanner beard but uh very exciting stuff coming up with tbg and um uh, nice. very excited it's going to, to our charity that's what it's all about awesome this has been awesome tanner can't thank you enough good luck with holy moly good luck also with your endeavors good people i'll, I'll need I'll, I'll take all the luck i can get it's uh, it's a hell of a competition man intense i love it and especially right now it's good to see some competition out there so yeah. Yeah. hey thanks for having me on and uh we look forward to hearing more of your podcast man you guys are great i appreciate it Tanner. all right cheers <laughs>